Why did dinosaurs go extinct? We do what? They didn't. I just had one for lunch. One just flew by the window. Oh, oh, you mean non-avian dinosaurs. Why did non-avian dinosaurs go extinct? Now that is a good question. So the late Cretaceous was a pretty crazy time in Earth's history. Climates were changing, sea levels were rising, there was a fair amount of volcanic activity all over the world. But the thing that I would argue ultimately did in the dinosaurs was a giant asteroid impact about 66 million years ago. The same one we all probably learned about in school, second or third grade, thanks Mrs. Pees. So how do we know? How do we even know there was a giant asteroid impact about 66 million years ago? Well, if you go literally anywhere in the world and you date in the rock strata to about 66 million years, you will see a line. And I do mean you, because you do not have to be a trained paleontologist or geologist to see this line, because there's a literal line in the rock that separates dinosaurs from no dinosaurs in the fossil record. Now this line is called the KPG boundary and it separates the Cretaceous from the Paleogene. And if we look really closely at this line, we realize that it's made of incredibly high levels of iridium. Now, iridium is a really rare mineral on Earth, but it's found in high concentrations in meteorites. So we know that something of extraterrestrial origin slammed into the Earth, moving at about 25,000 miles per hour, exploded a ton of its guts up into the atmosphere, and over time, those guts settled in the dirt all around the world, leaving that line in the rock that we can now see today, separating dinosaurs from no dinosaurs in the fossil record. And that brings us to the thing of the week! which is hiding in my sling, which is a great place to hide stuff like candy and phones and tektites. So this is a tektite. And while tektites might look like they're of extraterrestrial origin, they're actually only evidence of something from outer space. They are made almost entirely of materials we find here on Earth. And they are found in and around the strewn field where our meteor impacts. So you have a meteor that hits with tremendous force and pressure, it sprays a ton of the earth material up and away, and as it cools and coalesces, it forms amazing shapes like this that are tremendous evidence of a meteorite impact, even though this in and of itself is not actually made of stuff from outer space, it's made of stuff you could find here on Earth every single day, but you couldn't really form this without the tremendous heat and pressure of that meteor impact. And by the way, out in space, asteroid, as it comes through the atmosphere, meteor, on the ground, meteorite, all the same thing, just called different depending on where it is, similar to lava and magma, above ground, magma, underground, lava. Actually flip that, above ground, lava, underground, magma. The more you know. <laughs> so when this meteor hit, it ejected a ton of itself straight butt up into the atmosphere as rock vapor. So now you have meteor rock vapor encircling the globe, and as it cools and coalesces, it forms literally billions upon billions of tiny little meteorites. And as they are pulled back to Earth by the Earth's gravity, they all raise the temperature collectively of the Earth's atmosphere to that of about a pizza oven at a thousand degrees, literally cooking alive anything that wasn't either underwater or a couple feet underground. So if you're a dinosaur, or really any animal living anywhere near the Yucatan Peninsula where the meteor impacted, it's a pretty bad day. You were probably vaporized immediately. Um, but conditions didn't get much better for almost a decade afterwards. Now there's still a fair amount of debate about how quickly this meteorite impact would have actually led to the demise of the dinosaurs. So I think at this point most of us are familiar with how eventually all the dinosaurs went extinct due to this impact, right? If you explode a ton of ash and dust up in the atmosphere, it blocks out the sun for a period of time, and when there's less sun, not only can the plants not photosynthesize, but temperatures start dropping. So when the temperatures start dropping and plants can't photosynthesize, they start to die off, and then when you have less plants and the herbivores have nothing to eat, and then when you have less herbivores, the carnivores have less to eat, and it's basically a big long-term chain reaction over the course of probably about a decade that ultimately led to the demise of the dinosaurs. But it wasn't just the dinosaurs, because this extinction event killed about 75% of all things on Earth. As always, don't forget to leave your questions and comments in the sedimentary layers below, and don't forget to subscribe by hitting the phone. And remember, whether you're searching for dinosaurs, asking questions, or simply attempting to tunnel to China, never stop digging. And now a detailed reenactment of how this happened. Quill knobs are tiny sites on a long headphone. Where what is a dinosaur? Feathers, that is a great question. Especially for the first episode of the show, it's all about dinosaurs.